There is still a very large number of people who work from home in this pandemic. And for some, it's been several months, others nearly a year now. What started out as challenging with navigating Zoom and other virtual platforms for meetings and et cetera, it has evolved into how to handle a lot of different aspects of now our professional lives. May Habib is uh, an expert in communications. She uh, was the news editor of the Harvard Crimson. She is a CEO of a couple of companies. The most recent is writer.com. Uh, you used to be in investment banking. The list goes on and on, May. It doesn't seem you're old enough to have a resume like this. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about this because there are so many different aspects to where relationships have changed just in the last year. Let me have you start with that and you can jump off at any point uh, where you want to start. Okay, wonderful. Um, so nice to be here, Betsy. Thanks for having me. So Writer is an AI writing assistant. Uh, we help people communicate well and beyond stylistic and grammar improvements, uh, we make sure that people are writing in ways that promote healthy cultures. So as part of that, um, we did a survey uh, earlier where we interviewed thousands of Americans um, across the country who use chat or video at work. And the, uh, so the results were kind of surprising. Um, you know, we are uh, a little unfriendlier uh, over chat than we were before. And uh, given just how many of us now are working from home, um, it's time to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the kind of big result um, that we thought was, was interesting or two big results, um, one is uh, people reported feeling like they uh, became worse writers as a result of so much of their uh, um, writing happening online and in chat messages. And secondly, people reporting um, uh, racist or toxic communication um, happening via chat um, that wasn't happening in person. Now, I work in a newsroom and in broadcast television, writing is critical. Our words mm -hmm. we know matter in, in our profession. But when it comes to communication inside the workplace, while we're all about communication on television, uh, we don't have the best communication. And now when we have some people working from home, some people inside the station, so that's my circumstances, but a lot of people can relate to this because that's the way companies are being run right now. Some come in, some work from home, um, and the conflict there. Now, people can go to H are when they have an issue and and try to work out their grievances that way i'm somebody who likes to be a little bit more direct and deal with people help help me navigate that um we actually built a whole tool around this um what writer does is you know tap you on the shoulder basically and underlines uh, content that could be perceived as passive aggressive or indirect or too direct um or just plain old aggressive and um you know, if, if that's what you intend, awesome, click send. If that's not what you intend, you may want to edit or revise what you just uh, what you just wrote. And the, the key here is to keep in mind that whatever you write to somebody is going to be perceived in the worst possible tone. They are going to, in their mind, read what you just wrote in the worst possible way. Why that's is that? It's human nature. It's, it's human nature. It's our fighter flight response. It's, you know, what does Betsy really think of me and how is that coming across in, in this You text? know, and I, so, and I, envy, <laughs> I envy people who have that ability to see the best. I'm just naturally mm -hmm. skeptical in this job. Totally. I'm skeptical. I, I you know, I wonder, yeah. did, did they mean what they said? A lot of us um, who are, um, who are skeptical, who will, you know, try to read and chew. And it all happens like really subconsciously. So one thing that we've been, you know, counseling um, customers and our AI writing assistant is used by companies and teams um, to both promote good writing and healthy cultures. Uh, but one thing that we do counsel is, you know, be really direct that with your team that civility is a virtue, civility is a value, and we just don't tolerate, you know, passive aggressive communication in the workplace. You use the phrase passive aggressive. I'm like, here in Minnesota, where <laughs> we're known for Minnesota nice, Passive yeah. aggressive is just how we live. <laughs> you know? it's, a new it's a whole language, right? <laughs> it is. A little eye roll here, you know, it's, it's funny. And how people now 
Uh, I can feel snubbed if I go into a lunchroom and I can tell, you know, because you can feel people's body mm -hmm. language. But now with uh, totally. online communication, you know you're being snubbed when somebody who normally gets back to you right away takes their time to not get back to you. you know, totally. There's all, these, totally. there's all these different facets of it. I need to take a quick break, yes. um, but I do want to come back and talk to you with, uh, uh, or to talk to you about how social media and our communication through social media has changed in the last year. We'll do that in just two minutes. I'm so happy to be continuing our conversation with May Habib, who uh, is a communications expert. She's been CEO and is current CEO of her own company, uh, graduated from Harvard, is all about grammar, communication, relationships at work is what we were talking about before the break, May. But I really do want to change the focus a little bit and how our communication has changed and evolved with social media, not necessarily in the past year, but in the past year, we've been seeing oh, so much of it because more people are at home and online. Yes, absolutely. Um, and what we what we did and thought this would be interesting really around um, the election originally um, was uh, we took our healthy communication machine learning model. So the exact same technology that uh, tells you, Betsy, if you're about to be a little passive aggressive to <laughs> your husband in the chat or to a colleague at work. We took that and we basically trained that model on what people were writing um, on social media, specifically Twitter. And uh, the results were, were really interesting. Um, uh, you all in Minnesota are very nice online relative to the rest <laughs> of America. Nice to know. Um, but, <laughs> yes. Um, but we really did see um, uh, the, the, the toxic language online um, uh, grow to a crescendo uh, January 6th, the day of the Capitol riots. Um, was the most most toxic day on Twitter um, since we started tracking it. It's thankfully since come down, um, but it is really interesting to see just the flavor of the public um, uh, uh, conversation reflect um, what's happening. Writer.com is the company. I would uh, so encourage people to check it out. Not only is it going to uh, help in the areas that we've already discussed in this interview, but it's also going to help your grammar. And I, I am a, I'm grammar police at my house. <laughs> May, I so appreciate your time. Thank you.